Thank you, Moses. <clears throat> good morning, everyone. It's good to be together once again in Jesus' name. Um, we start by uh, wishing all those who have birthdays this week a very happy birthday. Ron Foreman. It looks like it was just your birthday the other day. Um, you have a birthday on the 30th. And Sophia Panagiotopoulos. These names are really testing me. Um, September 2nd. We hope that you both have a blessed birthday. An announcement about our in-person worship. We continue to meet this way until we advise differently. As you know, we are still in the midst of the pandemic. So uh, stay tuned and we trust that you have a worshipful, blessed experience even as we worship this way. Please take note that if you haven't yet collected your packages uh, for Holy Communion, call the office or come to the office anytime between 9 and 2 from Monday to Thursday and pick that up. It's in a safe place and Evelyn will get it for you. They are consecrated elements. Wednesday Zoom Fellowship continues each week, so we trust that those of you that can join will join with us as we pray and have fellowship together. Take a moment to just quieten your heart once again. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, God of manna, God of miracles, God of mercy. Amen.
God's abundance, let us confess our sin. Let us pray. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in this world. Amen. Beloved people of God in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And also with you. Share a sign of that peace with those around you using an appropriate gesture, gesture and please send a text message to someone that you're thinking of right now. Listen to me, all of you, and understand. 
There is nothing outside the person that is going, that by going in can defile. But the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these things come from within and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <clears throat> Imagine life 50 years from now. How different would it be? Perhaps it might help by remembering how life was 50 years ago. Officers still had typewriters, remember that? Cell phones were only just being released and they were as big as bricks and not as smart as our smartphones today. Churches were different too. Lots of people attended. As some of you might remember of University Lutheran Church. Outside of our churches, there were Bibles. Remember the Gideon Bibles in hotels for anyone to have access to them. Everyone carried their Bibles to church. Some preachers actually said, if you don't carry your Bibles to church, it's like going to war without your weapon. Now we have our cell phones, so we are armed as we go to church. Perhaps in 50 years from now, people will be told, this is our doctrine. If you don't wear a mask, it's like going to war without a shield. I pray that it does not come to that, both becoming a doctrine of us needing to wear our masks. Even though right now we need to at least protect our neighbor by wearing the mask. If today is anything to go by, 50 years in the future, the church might say, that's our doctrine. The church might also say, if you don't wash your hands, you cannot go into the church. It may be for health reasons and safety reasons, but maybe some will say that it is part of our practiced ritual in the church. That's how it started amongst the Jews. Uh, let's look at the history, at least from the time of Moses. After 40 years in the wilderness and years in exile throughout the history, and having lived in dusty conditions, sometimes in tents, mostly living off the land, they had every reason to practice the washing of hands, especially before they ate. But unfortunately, they made that a religious practice, as we see in the text today. They included that in their doctrine and in their religious ritual. They, they equated that washing of hands to the teachings of the founders of the faith, like Moses and the Ten Commandments. Washing of hands became part of the central rituals of worship, as if water would cleanse you of your sin. Today when we read the Gospel and Jesus' exposure of the hypocrisy of the time as people focused on these external things and ignore the deeper things that are really the things that are central to our faith, 
We might all say a resounding, Amen, Lord. We believe you. We with you. Yet, sadly, even today, there are some amongst us who are uncomfortable when the liturgy for the service does not include some things that they consider to be primary and, and things that they say has to be there. There are some that get uncomfortable or even upset when they see that the table is not set according to what they say has to be the way that the table needs to be set. I served a church like that uh, once not so long ago. And when I started to reach out to the community and bring people in, people that were poor, people that were poor physically and also in spirit, addicted to drugs, addicted to alcohol, addicted to prostitution. These churchgoers tried to stop me from getting those people into the pews. They said, Pastor, we'll help them. By all means, we'll help them. We'll have counseling, we'll give them food, we'll give them clothes. Some even said, we'll give them the clothes so to, we can teach them what to wear to church. Many of the so-called proper church people left when I didn't stop. And they left with their money, and so we know what happened. The church eventually closed down. In the text, Jesus turns to the people that were around him, the ordinary people, the people who might have had issues in their lives, the people who, in spite of all that, chose to follow him. They were eager to believe. They were eager to follow the Messiah. They saw something good. They were hearing the good news. He calls them. He doesn't call the hypocrites. He calls them and says to them, don't be misled. Don't be fooled by the teachings of the religious. It's not what goes into the mouth that defiles you but what comes out of the depths of your heart. In another text, Jesus chastises the religious leaders for laying huge burdens upon the poor. The persons <coughs> on the street, the so-called ordinary people, yet they themselves, the religious, did not lift a finger to keep these expectations for themselves. In this text today, Jesus, as he approaches, as he talks to the ordinary people, is really teaching them and us about what grace is. Grace is not pardoning us for not following the liturgy. Grace is about <clears throat> accepting the transformation that comes through salvation and letting that transformation be seen in our lives. Jesus was not writing off, of course, the rituals of, of the church or the synagogue at that time. One might argue that after Jesus left this earth, there were more rituals than before. If, did, if Jesus did not serve the Last Supper on the night in which he was betrayed, as we say, we would not have the Holy Sacrament, perhaps. If Jesus did not send his disciples out, as is recorded in Matthew 28, the last chapter of the book of Matthew, go into the world and preach the gospel, baptize all people, then maybe <clears throat> We won't have the sacrament of holy baptism. So one might say Jesus added ritual. So he was not against ritual that will help us to be closer to God. And that, that would help us focus on what is important in the gospel. Talking about what is important. In, in 
gospel, particularly in worship. In the ELCA, we have, we have begun to explore vitality decades ago, vitality of churches because of the decline. And churches started to explore different forms of worship uh, besides changing the liturgy. And they asked the leaders of the church, so what can we add or leave out if we want to remain Lutheran? The answer was this. There are four basic components of the Lutheran liturgy. And I know that our two seminarians in our church will know them off by heart by now. The gathering, the word, the table, and the assembly. It's that simple. In each of these components, there are no hard and fast forms. We were told to be creative. So we have churches that are the so-called high church, and churches that are maybe Pentecostal in the way they worship. And they remain Lutheran. When the pandemic started, and more churches started to meet online or have shorter in-person services for fear of exposure, pastors asked the bishops, so what should our services look like? And we were told, just proclaim the word. Give an opportunity to gather around the word and proclaim it. Don't be apologetic. Let the people hear the grace of God through the word. Let God, the Holy Spirit, apply the rest of the elements of <coughs> our worship to the people online. In reality, even when we gather in person, it is the work of the Spirit to apply that work of grace through all of these movements so that we will become more like Jesus. Let's hear Jesus say to us all as the church now and always. Let the doctrine, let our theology, even our religious ritual work from within us to make us witnesses of that grace. That's what we're about. Paul says, live a life that is worthy of the calling you have received. And Paul goes on in Ephesians chapter 4, where that is from, to describe what that means. A list not dissimilar to what Jesus gave in the text today. Living a life without envy, without slander, without think, <clears throat> thinking the worst, actually the opposite, thinking the best of others. That's evidence that we have heard God. Not the washing of hands and other religious rituals. Now, the doctrine of salvation is not replaced by this ethics, Christian ethics, that we practice. Far from it, it's not replaced. But we can claim to have been transformed by the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ if we don't practice, if we don't live according to those codes of ethics. Let's do those small things that shine lights and display what's inside the heart. Small things. Be kind. Send a kind note, even a text message or an email. How carry someone's burden of grief or loss, and we know there's a lot of that nowadays, carry the burden of pain and despair even if it is 
with small literal acts of kindness. When we are tempted to impose our expectations, let's stop and think about the words of Jesus today. Then maybe we'll leave a world that 50 years from now will be better than what we found. And more people will feel attracted to God's church. Amen.
almighty and merciful God, through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Betrayed, he took bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it for all to eat, saying, Eat of this, all of you. This is my body broken for you. After they had eaten, he took the cup, gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we remember our Lord's death and resurrection until he comes again in glory. Amen. We pray together as our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All are welcome to the table of the Lord. Thanks be to God. participate at home using the packages that you received 
from church. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you. The Lord look on you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Thanks be to God. God.